Welcome back, everybody. It's been a while. I know sometimes life gets in the way of our ambitions. That's basically a long way of saying I got busy. Uh, I hope you guys are doing good. I get a lot of questions about the UF-1, the SSL UF-1 in Cubase 13, about how I get it to do some of the stuff I get it to do. So I made a video about it. And I'm going to show you what my setup is, how I set it up in the 360 app, and the UF-1, how it's set up, the couple different fader modes it's got, and hopefully it will be helpful to somebody out there. You guys enjoy it. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, you guys ignore Cubase in the background here. You shouldn't have any DAW started before you get the UF-1 switched over and set up for it. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the UF-1 and I'm going to press that 360 button. The 360 app will pop up like that. I am going to come over here to this little gear in the control setup. I'm going to click on it. DAW configuration. My first DAW I'm going to set as Cubase. Boom. As you can see, there are multiple different um, DAWs that the UF-1 can work with. And you can do different ones in each DAW here. So it's entirely up to you. For this demonstration, there's going to be none in two and none in three. All right. Transport setup. Plug-in mixer and the MIDI CC transport links need to be set to DAW-1. Just like that. That's good to go. And the controller settings, the only thing I changed was to track colors. It'll probably be white, but I just changed it to track colors because I like looking at all the pretty colors. Okay, so we're good to go here. We're going to come down here to the UF1 tab. Click on it. Make sure we're in layer 1. Just click on layer 1. And come over here to the DAW. Choose DAW 1. If you click on the port here, it tells you exactly how to set up the UF-1 and Cubase. MIDI port ins and out both go to port 1. So that's very valuable information. Fader settings. My fader is set for the UF-1 and the UF-8, but if you're only using the UF-1, this is your setting right here. Use it. Auto select. Needs to be checked. Needs to be checked. Fader max level. I didn't change anything here. The soft key and the secondary transport. Um, this is all your mapping that you can do. You can change colors, blah, blah. Entirely up to you. I scroll down to the advanced section here, transport. This layer is the transport master. When I uncheck it, there's no transport green transport master here. When I check it, oh, it's transport master. All right, make sure that it's checked. Okay, this is good to go. I use a lot of SSL plugins, so on my layer two, I put the plug-in mixer. When I put the plug-in mixer, I check the UF1 follows selected plug-in mixer channel strip instance. I check it, make sure it's checked. Okay, we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and come over here to the plug-in mixer. I'll click on that bad boy. Over here on the left-hand side, it's probably going to be like that, plug-in. I click it to DAW, make sure the DAW is highlighted. All right, that's pretty much well good to go for those settings in the app. Let's come over to the, three, uh, the UF1, and I am going to press and hold the 360 button and make sure DAW1 is selected. You'll have different selections if you have different DAWs set up in the UF1 uh, app. So make sure the DAW that you're going to is selected. Since ours is one Cubase, it's selected. I'll have like a, the plug-in mixer because I've got the plug-in mixer on the secondary transport. Boom. DAW one, Cubase. 
Okay. UF1 is ready to rock and roll with Cubase. Let's go up here in Cubase, pull up Cubase, in Studio, Studio Setup. Make sure when you add the device, which you're going to have to do, it's a Mackie control, not Mackie Huey, not anything else, but Mackie control. Make sure it's that. And then over here in your MIDI input and your MIDI output, it said port one. So guess what? I'm at port one. Um, let me move this over real quick so you guys can see this. I don't know why. I think it's probably the size of the window or something. But Windows throws this like my first MIDI port is a port 11. Then it goes port 12. Then it goes to port one. So make sure you're on port one on both of these, the MIDI input and the MIDI output ports. Port one. Okay, I'll come over here. I'll hit apply. Okay. Now the UF1, you can do a ton of stuff with it without any mapping or anything like that. I, I don't use any mapping at all because it, <laughs> I don't want to take the time to do it, for one. And it does so much. I've already learned so much with it. So it just helps me and it speeds my productions up so much. So I don't know why I keep turning that. That's strange. Anyway, right now you can do that. So now I will get to the fader modes. There's a couple different fader modes. And uh, let's jump to that here real quick. About 90% of the time... Um, I'm in fader mode. Um, the first fader mode is kind of like a blank screen. You can see here, it's not a whole lot going on. If you go to the second fader mode, this is my favorite fader, uh, fader mode. I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, you'll see it says F-A-D-R, fader. Um, and then you got these little green bars here. The next mode would be for like if you've got um, the meter here. This meter here, if you got it on, I, I use it in the control room, I use it a lot. If you've got it there, then it'll show up here on the large screen on the UF-1. And of course, you know, if you play, play anything. All right, you guys can't hear that because I've got my headphones on. You can probably hear it a little bit. Um, all right, anyway, that's what the mode button does. So let's go back over to the first mode. And this mode, I don't use it a lot. I don't know. I use it sometimes. But I like the green fader mode much better, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. But in fader one mode, what I call fader one mode, I don't know what it is. Fader select, fader one. Um, it's with the blank screen here. You can do quite a bit. I can come up here, like, to this channel here. Now, right off the bat, since we're using the MCU protocol, the Mackie protocol, um, the way the UF-1 works, it'll work in banks of eight. It'll do that in any DAW, or whether Huey or not, but these banks or eight are very important. Any bank that I click on here, the, any channel that I click on in the bank. And if you see this white line here, going up here, it's got eight channels in it. Any channel I click on, the UF1 will go to automatically. And this is without adding the 360 app. This is just the way um, UF1 has the MCU protocol programmed for the UF1 in Cubase. So... If you go to any channel in the bank where this white line is at, it will go to that. If you go to a channel outside of that bank, the UF-1 will not switch to it. You have to bank to it. And if you see, I use my bank buttons most times because if you use the channel um, VPOT knob, it, as you scroll, it will scroll each channel 
until it gets to the last of the bank, and then it'll go to the next channel, but then the bank starts again. Now, if I am scrolling with my trackball with my mouse, um, that's kind of slow to catch up to it. Um, that's why I use the bank over buttons. The, you can, you can, I can bank a lot faster. I'm already at the bottom down here. Um, and faster than I can scroll with my scroll wheel or my scroll, my uh, trackball. So um, that gets me to the banks that are switching down. But remember, without the 360 app on here, you cannot switch to another channel and have the UF1 follow you. It will not follow you. It'll only follow the channels that are in that the bank, wherever the bank's at. And the bank's there. You can see that, obviously, um, if you're in, um, like, your mixer. You can just scroll all over. You'll see the bank down here. Does the same, has the same function, just like it would in your tracking windows and stuff. So does the same thing with that knob. The bank does the same thing here. See how you can go so much faster with the, the bank buttons. That's how, if I am scrolling through something, I'm banking over automatically with the UF-1. It's just because I use it so much and I've gotten so used to it, that's what I do. Or I'll show you another way, but we'll get to that. Anyway, so that's without the 360 app on any of the channels or anything like that. You can see there's no inserts or anything like that here. Um, if you use these buttons here, you can scroll, if you look up at the top here, the large screen, you'll scroll through each of the functions. Um, so in Fader 1, say that I wanted to... Let's get over here, open up this. Say I wanted to adjust this EQ, right? Um, I would come over here to the EQ. These are already active. I don't know why. Let me go ahead and deactivate them real quick for you. Show you something. Show how to do it. All right. So on these knobs here, these represent the first two. This is basically, let me turn it on. You turn it on with the, uh, the gain. You just hit it with this V-pot up here. Um, this will scroll it to different frequencies. And then that gain will bring it up or down, whatever you want to do. And then I can go to the next one, activate it, put it at whatever frequency I want, give it some gain. Hit this 5-8 button. That switches over to the next two. So I can activate the third one, move it wherever I want, up, down, whatever I want to do. Four, move it over, up, down, whatever you want to do. This is fader one level is, well, this is what I'm calling it. Uh, this is what I use it for when I'm doing like the comp compressors, the EQs and stuff like that. And this is just the stock stuff that are on the strip for, because you can, you can do all of this stuff with um, the UF1 if you want. Get rid of those. So, that's what I do. Let me get over here and deactivate these. All right. Let's get out of that. We don't need that. That's what I use the Fader 1 selection for. It's just how I use it. Um, let's get to Fader 2 selection, and I'll show you why I like Fader 2 selection so much. Just hit the button, the mode button. You'll see it turns green. Everything turns green. Um, if you want to get out of the EQ, adjusting all the EQs, or if you're over here anywhere on the strip, 
the sins. Um, like I said, these two buttons here will get you through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm usually right here so I can hit my mixer button. Um, or, you know, the F3 key on, on your keyboard. I don't usually, most of the time, my hand's over here, so I'm usually just have the this selection over here to the mixer and stuff. Anyway, so I'm in fader two selection. I call it my green fader selection. So this one is my favorite one because anything in this bank, anything on any of these banks, if you look at these V-pots here and look up here a little bit maybe, or just watch the screen, this represents four of these channels. If I want to go to the next four in this bank, because there's eight channels in each bank, I hit the five through eight button. So I'll hit that five through eight button. Watch this when I touch this V-pot. Boom. I don't even need my mouse. Let me get my mouse out of the way. Um, say I want to go back to track one or the bass. Boom. Anywhere I touch. Ha! Ah, man, this is so convenient. I love this about the UF-1. Um, in Cubase. I haven't got it to work very well in Pro Tools or anything like that, but Pro Tools uses the, uh, the HUI, the HUI protocol, so, but I don't know. Anyway, in Cubase, I really like this. This is why I like the uh, green fader mode in Cubase, and then it doesn't matter where I, I, I put the bank. Watch this. Boom. It brings me right to the mix channel, wherever I'm at with the bank and we I didn't even see where I was at. So, but uh, anywhere you bank, you can just touch, you can get there very quickly. Um, you, you wanna go through the first four channels that these first four V pots represent that and now they represent the uh, last four channels in that bank. But really cool, really convenient. I love it about the UF1. I like it. Uh, that's why I like the green fader mode. Um, the green fader mode, I don't think you can adjust any of the EQs or anything like that. I, I've always done that in the, the very first fader mode. So, but that for me, that's great. Now, if you want to, I mean, you can do, it, it'll take you anywhere. And obviously, you know, you can, you can adjust your faders any, any way you want. Um, do whatever the heck you want to do. Pan, blah, blah, blah. Um, what I like to do the most here, let's get into the mixer. And I'll show you. get all of them. I come up over here to the Q-Link, click on the Q-Link whenever I'm going to add something to every track. Now, I'm going to add the 360 plug-in to every channel that I just selected. And it doesn't matter in Cubase. I like this about Cubase. You can select all the channels and then hit the Q-Link. And um, all the channels that you selected is going to react the same, whatever you do. doesn't matter, volume, whatever. Um, see, I can come over here. I'll choose this one and then it'll put it everywhere. Let's find the 360 yeah, link right there. Boom. It takes just a second because it's putting on like 57 channels. So, all right, boom. Now we're on everything. Everything that I chose, get out of here. Uh, everything that I chose, the 360 is there. This changes a lot of things actually. Um, Oh, you know what? Dad gummit. Uh, I wanted to show you guys this. Yeah, get out of here. You see this? This is my CPU load. It's you see where it's sitting? Let's do this again. And I will show you. Let's take all of these off. Are we still Q Link? Yep. Uh, why are, oh, shoot. Sorry about that. I didn't select them all. All right. Let's get rid of them all. It takes a second. Like I said, there's 57 channels here, so. 
bomb. They're all gone. All right, let's get back here. Now look, look at the CPU usage. Nothing, it's exactly the same. It uses no resources to put the 360 link on every channel, and there's 57 channels here. Um, right here, 57, you know, with all my um, mix buses and my uh, folders and everything else, there's 57 channels here, and I got distracted, I'm sorry, um, there's 57 channels here, so um, it doesn't use any resources, let's get this back on here, and we shall do this. Pop. Give it a second. We'll get them all back on. Let's get back over here, and I'll show you that again. See down here? It hasn't moved. It does not use any resources. So whatever anybody says. All right. So. Now this, like I said, this changes things a little bit because now I can pretty much well go wherever I want. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me get you back over here. Let you go for that. Pretty much well go wherever I want. And guess what? Got to get into plug-in mixer mode. All right. Sorry about that. I forgot about plug-in mixer mode. Um, anywhere I click now with that 360 link, it's going to go there. doesn't matter. And do you see all the pretty colors? Oh, man. It looks good. But it doesn't matter. Now the banks, when you're in the plug-in mixer, this is why I put the plug-in mixer on the secondary um, transport. So you see the little pretty colors wherever I click? It goes now. It doesn't, it just takes away the banking. And don't do like I did and forget about, you got to hit the 360 button, press it and hold it, and get over into the plug-in mixer. It, it takes away a bunch of functions, but I can get from place to place. And then if I pull up the 360 app, this is where it really shines. Uh, you can do so much here. It doesn't matter. I can manipulate. Let me push this over a little bit. And let's get to uh, wherever we're at. You notice how it changed over here in Cubase? Wherever I click. See how it does that? Isn't that cool? Um, so this app lets me do a lot of stuff. Let's get over here. Um, let's go to BV1. Do the other way. Let's go to BV1. Where'd you? Oh, I went the wrong way. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So you guys can see it and stuff. When I move here, wow, 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 moves the fader. Is that like cool? Gives me a lot of function. Um, if I add, I usually don't put, yeah, I can put them on the 360 app uh, link. I can actually add, like, if I was going to put the 4KB, that's like one of my favorite SSL EQ compressors and stuff. I use it all the time. I love it. And the E's okay. It's too mellow for me. I really like the B. The B's is just, uh, I think it just sounds more old school and I'm old, so. Anyway, yeah, I can put it here, but I will usually put it, um, like, on Cubase. So let's ditch this for the moment. Let's get over here. Um, and say that, uh, let's go over to the base like I would normally do. Say, I don't know why I didn't do it over there. boo ba doo ba doo ba doo ba doo I'm sorry, I come with sound effects. 
All right, there's my 4KB here, and there's my 4KB here, and I can manipulate it, do whatever I need to do right here in the 360 Link app. It's really cool. Doesn't matter. It does not matter. Um, I really like that about the 360 app, but like I said, I can actually put the 4KB on the 360 app and it'll still affect this channel. I just don't do it that way. I usually just work in the DAW, so. But I do like the 360 link because it gives me the opportunity to really get over from point A to point B. It does change a lot of the mapping settings and stuff on the UF1, so watch out for that. That that can be uh, quite confusing. You won't be knowing what you're doing and stuff. Or worse yet, um, let me do this. You'll do something like uh, go to the plugin, and you'll deal with the plugin. You'll be working with whatever plugins there and stuff. Unfortunately, did I take that off? No, nope. should be there. Yeah, it is. All right, um, I don't want to mess with it, but you'll be messing with the plug-in, and then you'll go, you know, da 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 or bank over, or you'll choose something else, and then you'll start wanting to work with whatever, you know, and you won't know what the heck, why, why, why is this not doing what I want it to do? What the heck is going on? And that, you always need to come back. If you're messing with any of the buttons over here, after you're finished messing with it, always come back to the pan button. It'll bring all the controls back to normal, and it'll do like it's supposed to do. So that's one thing that I learned uh, pretty quickly, let me tell you. <laughs> I messed up a lot of stuff doing that. Um, anyway, there's the settings. That's what it's all about. I hope you guys got something from this. I hope it helps. Um, like I said, uh, my favorite fader mode is the green fader mode, fader 2 mode that I call it, um, because of the touch. I just, I just, man, talking about being able to get from point A to point B, whoa, it's, it's fast. It's faster in any way I can scroll or anything else, and I do like that feature, and it's just a touch. It's just a simple touch. Um, I think it's more on the side. I don't think it's the top, as you can see. I think because that's more of a tap. I guess it'll do it. But if you just, the, the the total edge, I just hit the top edge. And it takes me wherever I need to go. And then I can manipulate, do whatever the heck I'm going to do. Um, if I'm going to go to the fader one mode, if you notice, no touch. Touch goes away. That's why I really like that green fader mode. Anyway, um, it can do so much more, but that's that would take literally hours. So that's my settings for the UF1 in Cubase. I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope there was a setting that you guys can use, and I showed you something that was uh, helpful for you. Anyway, you guys have a good one, and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.